So, I did not see another Paper Mario trailer coming today, dear god, but it is looking really good in my opinion. What do you guys think? Yeah, this is looking insane. So, I was always on the Origami King train, but this is just filled in a lot of the blanks. Uh, like, the first trailer was a great opening. I had so many questions about how the game actually plays, and this answers a great deal of them. Did you not watch my analysis, John? I answered most of these. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, I don't have an think? hour. If, if this does it in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. I'm agreeing with John. This is looking really good. I like what I'm seeing. Uh, it is appearing more and more to be an expansion of the ideas put forth by Color Splash and just expanding upon this. I don't don't think it's the return to form that people are hoping for. So if you're not on the Color Splash train at all, this is definitely not going to do anything for you. But I think the writing is there. I think the uh, locations are there. The graphics are there. Uh, and the combat, I think, is much improved over what Color Splash and, and especially Sticker Star did. Like, we are seeing improvements, but I don't think this is like a return to form like a lot of people are hoping. This is more like uh, Mario Party 10, 9 and 10 to Super Mario Party, where we're getting there, but it's not quite there. I kind of want to like throw out the phrase return to form with this game because a lot of what it's doing is different to what like Thousand Year Door in the first game did. Like looking at this battle system and seeing it over and over again, I'm seeing a ton of potential here. Like this, this to me isn't necessarily worse. It's just a different take. And I'd agree with that. It's uh, a lot of more puzzle based this time around. You're shifting enemies into certain positions that uh, work for your boots or your hammer or different items you have. It's a lot more thoughtful than you might have to do otherwise, especially again over Color Splash and Sticker Star. Yeah, especially when it comes to the uh, boss battles too it seems, where they're totally mixing it up in which you have to form an actual path for Mario to get to the boss, which is pretty unique. For me, I'm totally on board with what they're doing here. I mean, it's not a return to form in that it's identical to Thousand Year Door, true. But again, it, it is, as Derek said, moving in that direction, but my take on it is more positive than the spin Derek gave to it, which is, I think, the assessment a lot of people are, are giving it. It's like, oh, it's not Thousand Year Door, not interested. Which isn't what Derek said, by the way, but I think that's how a lot of people are taking it. <laughs> um, but for me, I'm like, yeah, this looks closer to Thousand Year Door and is doing its own thing while kind of still continuing in the own in its own direction along what Color Splash uh, started heading toward. And I'm fully on board this. I don't think it needs to be just like Thousand Year Door to be good. And what I'm seeing here has only further cemented me on that. Uh, now, to be fair, I haven't played it, so my opinion might fully change. But I'm really digging what I'm seeing here. The combat system is unique. It's fixing the biggest problem that people had with the previous two games. Uh, at least it seems. They're doing something interesting here. Even if it's not the same combat as before, it's something new, different, and fresh. And I, I'm really liking that because it's something we haven't seen before at all. And it seems like these battles will take actual thought. Um, and that kind of was one of the bigger issues before where they were kind of mindless and just a little tedious. Whereas it seems like that may not be the case here, uh, they, that may not be the case here this time. However, to, to that point though is, <laughs> well to that exact point, is that uh, it seems we may not be getting XP still. Because we actually see the end of a battle in one clip and a bunch of coins drop in and nothing else. Now it's possible mm. something else happens after that, maybe after, after that screen is the XP screen, I don't know. But that doesn't bode particularly well for the fate of XP when it comes to battles. Yeah, that's concerning. Uh, I, I don't know what to make of that yet. I, I suppose it depends how big of an impact coins have. Because maybe they can take the place of it. I don't want them to. But maybe they can have some kind of twist. One positive thing I like though in the combat is they seem to have given the hammer a bigger role. Like in prior games, the hammer would basically be what takes down spiky enemies, like ones that you can't jump on. Whereas now it seems jumps can like hop over an entire row of enemies, whereas a hammer can span across multiple rows, but not as far. Right. So I really like that that dynamic of like like um, just choosing what you're going to use to attack which, which enemy, without it just being dependent on the enemy. That's a really good point, because we're playing through Thousand Year Door right now, and the attack you use, whether it be attack or jump, is pretty mostly dictated by which enemy you want to target. <laughs> there isn't a whole lot of thought that goes into it beyond that. So yeah, giving it a little bit more of a reach definitely, I think, enhances um, the, the thought process of it. And, think, and speaking and to that point too, we discovered that not only can you spin this board, but you can also slide it as well, which kind of blew my mind. I did not see that coming, actually. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a surprise. And the thing is, I'm... 
it does stink that there doesn't seem to be any XP. Hopefully the battles do have some sort of purpose beyond just required fights or the like. But I think a thing that this, that this trailer really emphasizes is that it is more of an adventure. There's a lot of crazy mini games happening. There's a lot of set pieces to enjoy. So it's not going to be just all battles, which I think will help take the pressure off of needing the battles to matter that much. It might still be an annoyance if they don't get anything good. Maybe this is how you increase your confetti bag. I think that's how it worked in Color Splash. Right. So mm. maybe it's like that. I'm not sure. Yeah. But I, I think there's enough here that I'm not worried yet. Yeah, that little part is a little concerning if you're looking for more of a regular RPG type thing and having battles matter. But I think overall, the, this is looking to me like a better color splash, as long as the writing's there. To clarify, I think the hope is that the battles can still matter without needing XP. And as you were touching on, paint kind of served that purpose. That's what the purpose of paint was in color splash. So after each battle, you would actually get paint that popped out of the enemy on the, on the map. So we haven't seen what happens in this case, on the map after you beat an enemy, which it might be, as you were saying, could be confetti. And it seems like confetti will be pretty important in this game, given that that's how you, uh, that's where the bag icon of the HUD is now, as I speculated in our analysis, by the way. So I'm glad I got that right. And that's how you fill in the gaps in the environment, which is a similar purpose to, to Color Splash, but this time it seems like it'll actually be able to fill in things that largely impede your progress. I think I think that was also the case before too, but it's even more the case now it seems, where there'll be holes in the environment. We've seen, we've seen tons of these already uh, from the previous trailer, and that's how you fill them in. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of neat, and that could be rewarding in and of itself, you know, depending on how frequently you have to use the, the confetti, which seems to be pretty frequent <laughs> based on just what we've seen in the world. Speaking of filling in, am I interpreting it right that finding toads in the environment fills in the crowd in battles? That's what, that's what, that's my take. That's what I wrote down here. Uh, toads add to crowd, <laughs> which again, <laughs> is such a thousand year door thing to have here. And I adore that. <laughs> <laughs> Like when when they were showing it initially, saying like, "Oh, you can find all these toads," I was kind of sighing because I hated those portions in Sticker Star and in like Paper Jam and even Color Splash. But giving them a bigger purpose and making them seemingly optional is something I'm really behind. That's so much better than what they had prior to that. That's a funny thing. They they're they're optional, but they feel more meaningful now. And I think knowing they're optional will actually increase the satisfaction of looking and finding for them. Because I think when you're told to do something, it's not as fun as when you naturally want to do it yourself. Um, and mm. I think that will hopefully, if that, if we're assuming correctly, that will make uh, Finding Toads just a lot more manageable and more entertaining in this game. Absolutely. There's a sense of fun to the, all of it, because I, I liked, like every scene that we see. That like We have that shooting game, we have the boat, we have the underwater segments, we have just so many different things to experience and I think it's a really good trailer. I think this trailer has potential to turn a lot of people around on this game. However, I wish they hadn't shown as much they had in one aspect. They showed four of the bosses in this and we know there's five areas so yeah they, I, they might have showed their hand a little too much when it comes to that. I was thinking the exact same thing. Um, of course, I say this is one who who made an hour plus analysis of this game, and I've seen comments of people being like, "I can't watch it because it looks like it spoils too much." So, knowing all, all that I have from doing the analysis and seeing this now, I'm like, "Ooh, yeah, this is most of the game <laughs> we're looking at." Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure there's still a fair amount within each section that we don't know about, but yeah, we know the broad strokes now for sure. We knew we knew a fair amount before, but we know even more now. Um, and they made that very explicit, whereas you had to, you know, I feel like the previous trailer left a fair amount of mystery without, you know, before diving into anal uh, analyzing everything. But yeah, they kind of cleared up a lot of that by themselves this time. So, I, I mean, I think it's still going to be fun. This I've had this before with other games, and it hasn't, it hasn't really affected my opinion of them, really, overall. But, yeah, so I'm hoping there's still going to be a fair amount in there, though, that we haven't, you know, the more minutia stuff that we haven't seen. One thing I was happy to see is the companions have names, kind of. I mean, the bottom's, <laughs> bottom's called Bobby, but that's something. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little mm. bit of personality, which that's been lacking lately. I, I love all these original characters, even if they're still kind of vanilla. Right. Yeah. I mean, they are a little unique. Bobby's missing the fuse, for instance. Um, the Professor Toad is wearing a professor hat. Okay, explorer's hat. <laughs> um, the Magic Koopa has a, uh, apparently a penchant for cleaning. Also, they said that, the, that Bobby lost his memory, which is interesting. Something that we didn't have any clue of before. So I wonder how that plays into 
his story. So that's cool. We have partners, and it seems like they'll be, and it looks like we saw them you, helping you in battle. I guess we still don't know if you have full control of them or not yet, right, though? Yeah, we see the bob bomb attack. The bob bomb deals like 20 damage, but I don't know if that's automated or if you, you do that yourself. It's hard to say, because the majority of battles, Mario's on his own. Right. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't seem like something that happens that often. Maybe only specific sections, or they, they're definitely not like companions that are with you the entire time, mainly just for that section. Mm -hmm. There's something else that they didn't show off in this trailer that they didn't show off before either, is still no world map. <laughs> they haven't shown off like any kind of level-based system yet, which is, I think, confirming what I speculated, that's gone. We're back to a single open world, which is why I'm actually a little bit surprised by seeing still some reactions of people writing this off entirely. When this is the closest we've been, I think, to Thousand Year Door than we ever have been before. Yeah, I mean, it, I love that we sort of return to Toad Town as well. That's such a great hub. And it, the way it splits off in multiple directions definitely screams no world map. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully it doesn't just turn its head at some point. Hopefully it's gone entirely. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving this. I love the interconnected world going on. They're really emphasizing just how interconnected the world is, or at least just how big it is, because even during the boss fight against the uh, pen the colored pencil case, uh, which is with red, which presumably is the first you know boss, uh, we can see the blue streamer in the background. And it just it's it's kind of has that double dash or Mario Sunshine effect where you can always see other places you're gonna go in the background and have to make your way there, which, mm -hmm. I don't know, really makes everything feel interconnected. Yeah, that's exciting. I think this will feel even more adventure-like than Color of Splash, which I already felt was very adventure-esque, um, but it seems like they're leaning even more in that direction, which also brings it back you know, closer to Thousand Year Door. So yeah, I'm really excited by this, so I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that some people are still hesitant just because it's not matching up one-to-one -to -one with what they expect. What I'm seeing here, I am completely on board with so far. I am really excited about everything I saw. And I'm happy there's no Koopalings. I mean, I liked <laughs> them when they first came back, but they are so they, overdone now. They are, yep. Yeah, so now we're fighting a, a box of colored pencils? I mean, that's an upgrade. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. That's I do like that there's original bosses, although they, I guess they, they rather than summoning these real-world objects to help you, they're fighting you now, so... <laughs> <laughs> Tides have turned. <laughs> they have turned, that's right. And we do see in the uh, in the trailer that what we saw in the initial reveal, which I wasn't entirely sure about, uh, it looked like a almost like a frisbee on the wall, is actually a spool of the ribbon that leads right to the bosses. Oh, wow. So that's kind of mm. interesting. So it does confirm that you'll be able to follow those ribbons through the world directly to the boss. So that's kind of interesting. We never had like a through line that explicit before <laughs> to to your goal. I think that's kind of clever. I just hope it doesn't make it feel like too linear. I don't think it will, but it does mean that you'll always have at least some idea of where you need to go next. There's uh, one scene that caught my eye. There's the uh, scene that was that ended the prior trailer where Mario wears the, the Samus helmet. That Samus helmet is entirely missing in this one now. So Mario's wearing a Goomba hat, and there's still the Donkey Kong one in the background, but Samus is gone. Maybe he threw it mm. off and it just smashed apart or something? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, it could be. Because <laughs> I think that Goomba hat was there, so you might be able to try on other ones before you do that, because I'm guessing it's part of some sort of stealth mission, as we I think we saw in the first trailer as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's, I hope uh, so. I love stealth. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's good stuff. I'm I, like I really don't have any major complaints to this. There's still mysteries to be had, especially in regards to experience. But I think we're in, a, in for a pretty good time. Can we talk yeah. real quick? I, I, we don't have to talk about. It. I just want to mention it. The dialogue with the just a detail in this game because the the color pencil dialogue, the text is actually colored as if it were <laughs> <laughs> drawn by colored pencils. I just love these uh. little touches. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it does this with um, with the origami as well. They have different text boxes right. to the paper people. That's such a great detail. It is. I, I'm liking that we're seeing a wider variety of characters than we may have before. Even if they are like the more typical generic Mario types, we are seeing a uh, I think what might be an even wider spectrum than before. Um, we have like a giant I think uh, not Sumo Brother. Uh, what is it? A Sludge Brother. I think, is he in a bar setting or something, it looked like? Or running a shop? Mm. I missed exactly what it was, but... Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. And this is only one month away. <laughs> what we're seeing right now, we'll be, we'll be playing in a matter of weeks. I can't That's insane. That's insane. Yeah. I, it, God, I am so stoked. It's, uh, yeah, good timing, too, with us playing through... Well, we knew it was coming, so we were playing the Thousand Year Door. But, yeah, it, the fact that it seems so close is just crazy to me. We didn't, we didn't know about this game a month ago. Now it's almost here. 
<laughs> that's pretty wild. So kind of, that's kind of nice. Not that I necessarily want that for every game, but it is kind of cool that we haven't had much of a wait at all for it. Which works out in this case, considering if they keep releasing trailers like this, we may know everything about this game. <laughs> um, there are a few more trailers, so... Yeah, I think they could probably just do a launch trailer at this point. It will be good. I don't know if any much more information is really necessary. Yeah. I don't think so. I think we know enough. All right, guys, any final thoughts about the latest trailer for Paper Mario and the Origami King? Nope, just looking good. Yeah, I'm just really optimistic that they can pull this one off, because I, I liked Color Splash. It, the, the one thing I didn't like was the battle system, and this one looks really promising. Yeah, it looks really interesting. The only po the biggest hang-up about it is just the possible lack of XP, which we don't even know if that's a sure thing or not. But yeah, hopefully there's some kind of uh, material reward beyond just coins. But mm. yeah, we don't even fully know like how coins will you know be used in this game. We we know for shops and stuff, but uh, you know it'll be interesting to see like how the full like economy works and and you know my main hope is is that battles aren't you know don't prove to be pointless like they were, especially in Sticker Star. I do want some you know I do want to be motivated to play through these and and not avoid them entirely. So, but yeah, mm. otherwise I'm I'm stoked. Like even if the battle system ends up disappointing, which I'm not expecting it to at this point. Uh, I'm still there for the adventure. I love Color Splash, and uh, I'm excited for this. So, with that, I think that's our discussion of the Origami King and the latest trailers. I thank you so much for watching. If you like our discussion, make sure to click that subscribe button below for tons more on the Origami King, including probably possible analysis videos coming up, and everything else uh, related to in the future, too. We'll catch you later. Bye.